Hi, welcome back to Focal Point AFR Talk. The Obamacare woes continue to pile up. Turns out if you go to Maryland's Obamacare website looking for insurance, it gives you the phone number for a pottery store in Seattle, Washington. So that, that is, that's how messed up the whole Obamacare rollout has been. I want to welcome to our focal point decision maker line, Dr. Stephen Meyer. Uh, Dr. Meyer is with the Discovery Institute, one of my favorite organizations in the country, based in uh, Seattle, Washington. He's the director for science and culture there for the Discovery Institute. He's the author of two uh, outstanding books, both of them bestsellers, New York Times bestseller signature in the cell, and one that I'm in the middle of right now, Darwin's Doubt. And uh, Stephen, I want to ask you about your book, Darwin's Doubt, here in just a moment before we, after we deal with our first topic. But first of all, Steve, welcome to Focal Point with Brian Fisher. Thank you for having me on, Brian. Good to have you back with us, Steve. You've been on before. Casey Luskins, a uh, friend of mine from years past, so give him a greeting yeah, next time absolutely. you see him. Yeah, That's great. Great. Well, listen, Steve, I want to talk to you first of all about uh, this uh, story that broke over the weekend in the L.A. Times over what's going on at the Los Angeles Museum of Natural uh, History. So there's a controversy now that's erupted over a sign at the Los Angeles Museum of Natural History. What is this controversy all about? Well, it's another one of these cases where uh, aggressive, secularizing atheists are trying to rid the public arena of any mention of God or any really any expression of religious belief on behalf of other people. Uh, the museum there received a, an anonymous donation from a donor who wanted to help them start a, a display or a study center and wanted to erect a plaque with that that, that uh, indicated that the museum was, quote, celebrating God's creatures through scientific investigation. A, an evolutionary biologist clear across the country at the University of Chicago, Jerry Coyne, is associated with a group uh, called the Freedom From Religion Foundation. Uh, yeah, we're, we're, we're well familiar. We're well familiar yeah, with, you're, with you're that bunch. familiar with those, those oh, folks. Yeah, yeah, and, oh, yeah. And so Coyne protested to the museum. There was He wrote a letter that was you know vaguely threatening. And um, the museum immediately caved. And... Um, and one of the um, people associated with the museum lamented uh, in public about the problem of anti-evolutionary donors. Now, this is, I thought was, of course, unfortunate because it's another one of these cases where people misinterpreting the First Amendment think that they have to rid our public square of any uh, public expression of religious belief. But beyond that, I thought it was interesting because it actually is very revelatory as to the mindset of the scientists who are uh, promoting evolutionary thinking in the culture. When they, when they want to teach Darwin without any, uh, or Darwinism, modern Darwinism, without any contrary viewpoints, when they will not even allow criticism of Darwinian theory in the public schools, they tell, they tell uh, religious parents, hey, now just calm down, it's fine. Uh, you can believe in Darwin and believe in God, too. These aren't uh, contradictory propositions. But when uh, someone erects a sign on a museum where Darwinism is presented and the sign says something about the creatures being God's creatures, then they pitch quite a fit and uh, um, indicating that they think that evolutionary theory actually does have atheistic implications. And... The reason for that is they're not just teaching the idea of evolution, meaning change over time. They're teaching the full-blown uh, modern neo-Darwinian theory, which denies that there is any evidence of actual design in nature, and that the appearance of design that we see in nature is just an illusion because a purely undirected, unguided mechanism called natural selection, acting on random mutations, produced everything. And in their view... That mechanism is a purely materialistic mechanism that is not guided in any way, and therefore any discussion of God's creatures is scientifically backward. So I think what you see in all of this is that what underlies this attempt to secularize the public square, to get any uh, expression of religious belief or any mention of God out of our public institutions, is actually a, a particular understanding of science, a Darwinian understanding of science that 
that affirms that science or that the, the process that produced everything is purely materialistic. And that, of course, is what we're fighting with the, the theory of intelligent design. You know, it struck me, too, Steve, that this, uh, and I'd like you to comment on this, that this sign that they removed, it wasn't even a sign that expressed the viewpoint of the museum. It was a sign that just contained the words of the donor. So what's the significance of that kind of censorship there? Well, yeah, I, I, I suppose, I think it's just benighted on their part to publicly diss a donor who's given them money. And, you know, they could have, they could have you know, bought themselves some latitude and, and wiggle room with these people pressing them to get rid of it by saying, well, it's not our words, it's the words of the donor. But really, the, the, the real issue for the, for the culture, for the, for the public, is uh, are, are we going to allow these people in the name of science? And, and I would say it's, it's false science. First of all, um, you know, Darwinian theory is only one theory, and it's got problems, and there are reasons to doubt it, and we shouldn't allow a particular scientific theory to, um, to, to dictate to the culture whether or not people are allowed to express religious belief in, in, in public. Um, obviously, there's a whole history of, of probably of, of misguided church-state jurisprudence underlying some of this, but it is interesting the way these scientists are using, these evolutionary biologists are, are using their understanding of, of what science teaches to justify eliminating any mention of God in the public arena. You know, I, um, I've got a story in the stack here somewhere, Steve, talking here with Steve Meyer of the Discovery Institute in Seattle, uh, uh, who works in the area of intelligent design. I got a uh, press release from the Fire Institute. They work on religious liberty on college campuses, and they've done a survey of college campuses. 59% of them have speech restrictions, which clearly restrict speech which under normal circumstances would be protected under the First Amendment, and another 36% have restrictive speech codes, not as bad as the 59%, but almost as bad. So you're looking at 95% of the college campuses in America that are supposed to be places of academic inquiry. They're supposed to be places of academic pursuit. They're supposed to be places of, of academic and uh, intellectual debate and discussion but instead, they repress the free flow of ideas instead of support them. And this Jerry Coyne, this guy's an evolutionary biologist, University of Chicago, a very prominent educational institution. Let me ask you this, Steve. Has he ever agreed to debate a proponent of intelligent design in public? And if so, how'd it go? And if not, why, don't, why won't he do it? Well, I don't know why he won't do it, but uh, in fact, he was, uh, offered that opportunity both in print and uh, uh, and on air by um, uh, colleagues of mine who asked him to cons to consent to such a thing and he declined. Um, I, you know, I, I so I don't really know the reason. There are people on the other side who will debate, and we have a number of those debates uh, for people to listen to or watch on my website at darwinsdoubt.com. Uh, where, where, where I've been the opposite number, and a number of other folks have. But, but I think you make a really important point, which is that universities are supposed to be places, for, not just for the free exchange of ideas, but also where people investigate the big questions. And what question could be bigger than whether or not the natural world has evidence that points to the reality of, a, 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 of, of something beyond it? Um, is nature all there is, or does it point to a transcendent mind or an intelligent creator, an intelligent designer? That's a big question. That, you'd think that would be of interest to, to people in the universities, uh, but, but there are places where that question is being ruled formally out of bounds. Uh, there's a university at, uh, in Indiana, Ball State, where Jerry Coyne has uh, also been involved in, uh, in persecuting a professor there. He's he harassed the administration into investigating the teachers, um, the professor's teaching methods. Uh, the, the professor in question is a guy named Eric Hedin, who was teaching a class on the boundaries of science. And on his reading list, he included an, a, a book that was affirmative or supportive of intelligent design and one that was critical so that students could debate the merits of the question. But that was too much also for the Freedom from Religion Foundation and Professor Coyne. One so, last question, I, Steve. I got I, just 
I got just about yeah. two minutes left. One last question. You got a brand new book, New York Times bestseller. I'm about halfway through it called Darwin's Doubt. Highly recommend this to people that are interested in reading more about the subject of intelligent design. And I uh, uh, want to ask you to give us a quick snapshot of what that book is all about. And in particular, um, I'm about a third, maybe halfway through and reading through the stuff about the Cambrian explosion. Maybe you could take 60 seconds and talk about the problems that the Cambrian explosion poses for traditional Darwinian theory. Well, it's, a, it's an old problem that Darwin knew about. It's the problem of the sudden appearance of a major group of animals in the fossil record. And the problem that he understood was the missing ancestral fossils. They just weren't there in the, in the fossil record. But as I show in the book, the problem's grown up to become uh, illustrative of a major crisis with evolutionary theory. And that is the, the inability of the, of the evolutionary mechanism of mutation and selection to generate all the fundamentally new forms of life that arise, and the reason that that's so difficult is that the mechanism doesn't have, seem to have the capacity to generate the information, the digital code, the instructions stored in the DNA molecule that are necessary to build those animals. So at just the time when these aggressive, secularizing, Darwinian atheists are, are uh, out trying to suppress any belief in anything other than Darwinism, we find that in the technical peer-reviewed scientific literature, there are lots of problems with Darwinian theory. And my book goes, describes those at length and explains why the alternative theory of intelligent design actually provides a better explanatory framework for understanding the origin of major groups of animals and, uh, and the origin of life generally. And it's a book I'm happy to highly recommend, Darwin's Doubt, by my guest, Dr. Stephen Meyer, who is with the Discovery Institute in uh, Seattle, Washington. He is the director of the Center for Science and Culture uh, there. And, and Stephen, last question. You, uh, I'm a 49er fan. Are you a Seahawks fan or an impartial observer? Well, uh, I, I actually like the Broncos, but I'm from <laughs> Seattle, and so I'm going to get in trouble. I, I've got tension in the family. People want me to commit. So. All right. Yeah, that's right. I guess that's uh... – I'm a, a Peyton Manning fan, but I – I like Russell Wilson, our local guy, too, so I'm going to be all divided in two weeks. All right. Well, that was a very politically correct answer, Stephen. I uh, <laughs> commend you, and I'm grateful that you're more definitive. Maybe I could get a job at a university. That's right. That there you go. I'm yeah. grateful that you're more definitive when it comes to the issue of origins. My guest, uh, Stephen Meyer, Discovery Institute in Seattle. Uh, Dr. Meyer, thank you for taking time to be with us. Great book, Darwin's Doubt, highly recommended. Thanks for taking time to chat Thanks with us. Thanks for having me on. You bet. Bye-bye. Focal Point, AFR Talk. We'll be right back in two minutes. Don't go anywhere.